Welcome to the official Sober Minds podcast, where our mission is to empower and create more than just followers, but disciples. In this podcast, our goal is to always share the gospel, edify the saints, and equip you with the knowledge required to go out and change the world. Let's remember, the people must know. Here's your host. You know him as Pastor Hector, but here's our very own Hector Q. So we're back. We're back again with uh, Pastor Billy Crone. And we were just talking more about, um, you know, his background, his story of, of you know, how God redeemed him. And he was ta- talking to us about how he was involved in the occult and the new age and, and so on and so forth. But I wanted to ask him a question. And that question that I, I wanted to really elaborate on was the fact that um, I wanted to ask him as far as when you said that you felt like you were possessed, mm-hmm. right? You were possessed yeah. or you weren't oppressed, but you were possessed by demons, right? right. What, what did you mean by that? Like, can you, if you can describe it in some way? Well, the, obviously, the further that you go down uh, the dark route uh, and things of that nature, then the, um, the, the darker it's going to get. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, at first, um, the entities began to manifest. Uh, and um, in fact, uh, one of them appeared so many times we actually gave him a name. We called him Harry. Wow. And uh, it's just like, oh, there's Harry again. And typically it was like a, a black wisp, something like a figure. And just you could see it out of the corner of your eye. And then you turn it would disappear. But there was something there. So, so, so when you say it was the same thing, same person, that's why you called him Harry? Yeah, yeah, it was just a, a, a black wisp. Was it like whatever. a little leprechaun looking thing or like No, no, it's just more like a, a like a you know, kind like of a, a mist. F- yeah, like a mist, kind of a f- okay, it's kind of a figure shape but kind of black misty, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh and and that was that. But then, you know, again, it, the deeper you get, then you're actually instructed uh certainly in new age uh to ask these quote spirit guides, uh supposedly angels, well they're angels all right, they're fallen angels, demons. Uh, but they don't say that. It, it to literally, you ask them to not just appear before you, but to literally come inside you, to come inside you, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, begin to speak through you. Well, what's that? That's demonic possession. Yeah. Yeah. And then it began to manifest that this really is demonic possession because I was literally being driven insane. Uh, in fact, uh, happened a couple different times. Uh, the first time that it happened, it was a couple weeks before I got saved. Uh, I was literally, uh, I called it walking on, uh, on a razor's edge with literally insanity. And again, I'm not even saved, but the thought went through my head that if you give in to this, uh, you're, you're going to go insane and you're never going to come back. And the thought of getting into what more? No, giving into okay. this. To the this, deity? Uh, to, to, to the what, entity what was that it was? Me, okay. Uh, and things of that nature. And uh, because what happens is... Um, the, the occult, of course, Satan's a liar's father of all lies. And says, oh, you're going to have power. You're going to get super knowledge, whatever. No, they're, they're there to, to kill you, to lie, to yeah. deceive you, to lead you away from the truth, to lead you away from Christ, right? And uh, at, at, at first, uh, you know, you might have euphoria or you're thinking you're getting this super knowledge. It's all a lie. Eventually what happens is fear and terror begin to set in. Mm. And it's hard to describe, Hector, but it's, it's, it's not an external fear. It's an internal fear because these things are taking control and you're out of control and they're literally inside of you now. I, and I have yet to find the proper string of English words to describe what it's like to have demons control you. Uh, it's not just fear. It's not just terror. I, I just don't. It's just utter absolute terror. I don't know how to, to describe it. Uh, but what happens is... I was literally starting to now go insane. And uh, back to about two weeks before I got saved, it started getting worse and worse and periodically. And, and, and this, uh, towards the end there, uh, I literally, uh, when they would take over, uh, I literally had to read a book or watch TV just to maintain my sanity. I wasn't really watching TV and I wasn't really reading the book. I was just, I, I was literally, that was my way as a non-Christian of being possessed to maintain reality without getting sucked in. And I knew if I, uh, if I gave into it and didn't fight it, I would literally go insane and wow. not come back. And the first time to that degree, cause it was escalating the deeper I got the first time that happened, um, it lasted for about four hours. 
And what it made even more uh, terrorizing wasn't just the length of it, but I didn't know if it was ever going to stop. I mean, I literally could not function. I'm, I'm literally going out of my mind. And I'm going, in my head, I'm going, is this going to stop? Because I'm into the fourth hour now, and I'm not in control. And I'm fighting it with every tooth and nail I got. Mm -hmm. and, and then, fortunately, it subsided. And then, I, I kid you not, it's about two weeks before I got saved. I go, phew, I tell you what, this, I better lay off the drugs, man. Maybe that was a bad trip. I, I, I was just wanting to quickly rationalize it away. Yeah. It's just something like that. And, and sure enough, for at least almost a week, you know, I gave up most of the drugs and, you know, things of that nature. But then I, I, I convinced myself, yeah, that's what it was. But then, uh, within a couple of weeks, fast forward, that's what it God allowed to happen again, this time even more fierce. But that was the day I got saved. That second time that it happened to that degree, the demonic possession, the insanity, the utter terror, this time I ran to my bedroom uh, in, in my apartment there and I cried out to God. Wow. And he used that as a tool to lead me. That's how arrogant and prideful um, and rebellious I was. That's what it took for me to bend a knee to Jesus Christ. And and again, I, I would and never wish that on anybody, but I'm glad that that happened because if that's what it took for me to call out to Christ, praise God. Thank you, God, for Amen. Uh, allowing that to take place. Amen. And how did you know to call out to Jesus if, if you were never like introduced to Christ? Or? There, was, there was two people. Okay. Two people who, and I use this word, dared to witness to me because I was mean and nasty to Christians. And I was just, just bring it on. In fact, I'd be looking for them because I knew, because they couldn't answer my questions. And I just love to chew and spit them out and, and humiliate them. Wow. Right. And it wasn't that hard to do because again, they were ill-equipped, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, but there was two, one was my oldest uh, sister, Terry. And uh, this is, you know, pre-internet days and no cell phones at this point. And so she would write me letters. And she'd be witnessing to me about Jesus and the blood of Jesus and John 3.16 and all that stuff. In total mockery, I would write her back and I would quote New Age uh, sayings. And I'd say Herman 4 or 5 or something. i just total mockery of God in the scripture and throw in a New Age saying, you know, kind of witness back to her with mm -hmm. my truth, you know, of that nature. Another guy was a guy that very briefly God had... Um, uh, his name is Rhett, and I worked with him for a very short amount of time at a computer uh, company. And uh, Rhett didn't necessarily answer all my skeptical questions. Rhett loved me. Rhett took me out to eat and never asked for anything. Rhett always picked me up. Uh, Rhett invited me over to meet his family. And I got to see a Christian family in action. And uh Rhett just, he loved me. I mean, and he would tell me about Jesus and he put up with my baloney and he would tell me that, no, no, dude, I, 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 you know, he may not have the answer for all my stuff, but he would just keep me going back to, but I'm telling you, it's Jesus. You, you need Jesus. Amen. And I was, I was mean and nasty to him. In fact, he, and that was in California. He moved back uh, to the East coast. And uh, before he left, after doing all that to me, taking me to restaurants all for free, doing all the stuff that that. I didn't say bye, boo, thank you, nothing, right? Uh, but I will tell you this, a long story short, after I got saved, um, I'm actually, <laughs> this is just talk about God's sovereignty. Uh, I hadn't heard from him, you know, for a long time because I still wasn't saved yet after he left and went back to the East Coast. And now I'm saved, now I'm in Bible college. And I'm, I'm calling the compu uh, com uh, Apple computers because ha I'm having a problem. And... Uh, uh, and so I'm going through all these troubleshooting numbers, you know, 1-800, blah, blah, blah. And they say, well, we don't know what, what that is. So they transfer me to some other department. Uh, we don't know. And this went on for a couple of days. And finally, so I'm going through all these transfers. Next thing you know, I'm going through the same spiel. Hi, I got this problem, this computer, blah, blah, blah. And uh, can you help me fix it? And, and, and the guy on the other line goes, Billy? And I'm going, Rhett? And, and, you know, it's just like, what? What are the odds of this? Right. Anyway, so I proceed to tell him that I'm now a born again Christian. All of a sudden you hear the receiver on the phone hit the ground and he's just crying. Wow. Right. And then, then you can, I can hear him in the background. It's being picked up on the receiver on the floor. This is the guy. This is the guy I was telling you about, you know, whatever. And it was just, uh, anyway, that's a, uh, 
Amen. That was a special thing. And so God allowed me to get in contact with them. And again, pre-internet when you can like find people it's pretty mm-hmm. easy nowadays, you know. Were, were you able to get in contact them now, like through mm-hmm. this yeah. age as well? Yeah, yeah, he's in Florida now. Okay. So you, you guys are still close, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's, that's really awesome. So even with, with the whole um, leaving the cold and um, leaving new age and all these other things, did, did you did you find it hard to leave that? No. It was cut and dry. It's black and white. Okay. Right? As you know, the scripture says that God has rescued us from what? The dominion of darkness. Amen. And brought us into the kingdom of his son, the kingdom of light. Uh, I was in darkness. Now you're in light. And and that's for me, you know, uh, it's, it's hard for to understand. It's like, how could you live in the darkness and then now by God's mercy be brought to the light why would you ever flirt ever going back you know the goal of the Christian life isn't to see how close can I flirt with the darkness and still somehow come out being a Christian it's it's Christ it's all or nothing and and, and that's that's to me it's just very black and white but no there was no like oh boy I she you know, I don't rem- I don't reminisce about those days I don't want, in fact, my sister, I remember after I got saved, about a year after I got saved, my sister said, hey, I found an old uh, videotape. She used to room with me, you know, back in the dark days. And uh, she's a Christian now too, praise God. And uh, she said, I found this old tape and uh, with with you and I on it. And she says, you want to watch it? And I says, no, I don't ever want to go back there. I, don't, I hated that time. It was so horrible, right? I don't, and she says, well, I, I got to tell you something. She said, I watched it. And she said this. She says, you should see your eyes. And, and again, I think I was possessed. Mm-hmm. And I think there, that's why I didn't just have a hatred or dislike for Christianity. It was a seeding hatred. I think wow. it was demonic. Yeah. Wow. And did you, even after the redemption, even after you confessed to Christ and all, did you ever struggle with, no. with the guilt uh, of the I, past? Well, I, I think for a while there, uh, I cried a lot. And... It was because, yeah, I was a mean and nasty person. Uh, I was also a male chauvinist pig, and I was not nice to ladies. I certainly didn't honor them uh, scripturally, uh, and there was a lot of that. But just very selfish, self-centered, um, prideful, you know, male chauvinist pig guy. And so a, a, a lot of things I did, you know, were sinful, were horrible uh, to other people too. Uh, and uh, but you know, that's the beauty of. Christ's forgiveness is, um, you know, he gives you a new life and a new start, and he's forgiven you for that. Amen. And, and you move on, and, uh, you know, when I have opportunity with people, and I, you know, ask for their forgiveness and say, hey, that's that was the old me. I'm sorry that I did that, you know, to you. Uh, would you please forgive me? And Amen. I want to tell you that, you know, I'm not that person anymore. God set me free. You know, and if they're not saved, then you say he could do the same thing for you. Amen. So. What's up, family? Do you hear this exciting interview going on right now? It's exciting to be a part of such a world-changing movement. It's important to be sober-minded and understanding that God did not just move in the Bible, but he's moving now, even through you as you listen. So like, comment, subscribe, and let's get back to the show. And what would you say to that that young person or even an adult or a young adult um, that is struggling to leave the cult, yet they confess Christ as Lord and Savior, but they're still dabbling with the spirituality of new age, if you will? Because right now, if you know in our generation, there's a, there's a perversion. I, I always call it another gospel yeah. because they think that they could trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. They can call themselves a Christian, but yet they can do sage. They could burn sages. They could uh, do all these other things and read these other books that is non-Bible, biblical, if you will. And um, they think they could participate in New Age and still be a Christian. What yeah. would you tell to someone like that? Would you say that they're saved? They're not saved? Like, what would you say? Well, I'd say uh, you might want to check on what you're trusted in because uh, it would blow me away that you would sit there on the one hand and say, Christ is my all in all, but apparently he's, he, he doesn't meet your all in all, and I have to turn to witchcraft and the occult and false teaching to meet my needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you don't got a problem with that? There's something, because Scripture is very clear that all we need is Jesus Christ. You got him, you got everything. And the Scripture even says that everything we need for life and godliness is in God's Word. Why would you go anywhere else for truth? Uh, and so uh, that would concern me. I would want to make sure and talk to that person. Do you really understand uh, how it is you become a Christian? Uh, and then if you are, uh, again, why would you flirt with something that is going to bring destruction upon you? Uh, the scripture is very clear. Sin, uh, sin is fun for a season, but guess what? Payday comes. And uh, witchcraft, 
uh, is an abomination to God. The occult is an abomination to God. Why would you, if you're so thankful for Jesus dying on the cross for all your sins, rescuing you from hell that you rightly deserve and myself, why would you go back and engage in behavior that he considers an abomination, mm. right? Uh, uh, and, and you don't think he's, he's not deaf and blind. You don't think he doesn't see this? There's no private conversation. There's no secret ritual, right? There's no text message, no conversation he doesn't know and see. Do right? you know. think he lives mm -hmm. in the dark? What, what, he sees everything. Mm -hmm. right? and, and why would you be involved in that? Uh, I think a, a part of what's going on is New Age, I'm convinced, what that I was a part of, has permeated the church. And the church doesn't even know it because nobody's ever instructed them on what New Age mm -hmm. is. But the undercore teaching of New Age is basically a rejection of what Jesus said in John 14, 6. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. He's the only way. I didn't say it, Jesus did. Right? He's the only one that went to the cross. All other religions on the planet basically say you are God, you can become God, or you got to work your way to God. Only Jesus says, no, I'm, you're not God. You'll never become God. You can't be good enough, but because I love you, I'm going to take the death penalty in your place for your sins. That's why he died on the cross mm -hmm. for us, right? No other religion on the planet is that. that. But there's a lie out there that has infected nearly half the church now, at least those profess, professing to know Christ. So it's upwards towards 50% of people. It used to be 25%, which is bad enough. But nearly 50% of the church professing Christians today say that Jesus is not the only way. He's only one of many ways. Mm -hmm. Well, that's New Age. Because New Age is basically you get to be in the driver's seat. You get to decide what path you want to follow. Like Oprah. Right. Oprah, I call her Oprah Wan Kenobi. Right? <laughs> She's the biggest New Age priestess on the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, Promoting New Age. That you, there's many ways and you could choose that. Uh, I'll tell you another one that was very disturbing. I just, and I actually have a bookmark on my laptop for Lord willing at future study. But uh, Steve Harvey just came out yeah. with a New Age thought. I don't know if you saw that clip. And he's basically saying, no, nah, Jesus isn't the only way. Yeah. Right? There's got to be many different ways. And he's, he's taking that same route. Well, if you deny that Jesus Christ is the only way, are you even really a Christian? Yeah. I would say no. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I wouldn't, even his lifestyle that he doesn't, excuse me, his lifestyle doesn't even match Christianity. Right. Because even when, when I, I, I seen that statement as well. Um, all, of the, all of a sudden, you were a Christian, but then you went to this foreign Middle East land, if you will, and you just have an epiphany because you met someone who doesn't believe the same God that you believe in. Right. So all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, there's many ways to to, to, cry, right. uh, to God or to heaven. Well, and the scripture would say that a person in that case, if you're going to switch to something other than Jesus, which is basically what's going on, mm -hmm. um, and then the scripture says that person didn't lose their salvation. They never had it. They never had it. And I didn't say that. God did. That's First John 2, right? Mm -hmm. The scripture says that they went out from us because they didn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. If they belonged to us, they would have remained with us. Yeah. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. So that tells you that there's a lot of people out there professing to know Christ. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Jesus, he's great, and I'm trusting him for my salvation. But yet you're going to promote this new age lie that there's other ways to get to heaven. When Jesus said there's only way, or you're going to say that it's okay to do witchcraft, or I can be involved in the occult and say, I can be, here's an oxymoron for you, I could be a Christian witch. Excuse me? That's crazy. I don't think so. And yet there's a movement right now of, quote, Chris, Christian, so called Christian Warlocks. Witches. Right. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Because it, it, it started from a guy. Or, uh, I forgot. Uh, well, they're called several, nuns. Right. Well, yeah, but there's several of them out there. It's a mm -hmm. Christian witches. They're, they mm -hmm. have Christian witch conferences now and things of that nature and they, they say oh we're Christians but they're doing witchcraft yeah. and I, I'm sorry I got a problem with that yeah. right? that, that's gospel. an oxymoron it's like peaceful war icy hot Christian witch what ain't gonna happen mm. right you can't tell me that if you're born again and when you're born again you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God that the Holy Spirit of God isn't going to convict you and keep convicting you if you start heading down a route of that God calls an abomination if anything, he's going to put the fear of God in you to back off, get away. Because mm -hmm. isn't that what he does? He convicts of what? Sin. If yeah. you're in the Holy Spirit, you're not comfortable with sin anymore. Why? Because he's just trying to ruin your fun. No, he's protecting you. Because sin hurts, sin harms, sin destroys. Whatever yeah. the sin is. Mm -hmm. It could be lying. It could be witchcraft. That's a sin. Right? But if you don't have any conviction about it, and you think it's okay, and then you even go over the top and say, I can merge the two. Are you really saved? Yeah. 
because there should be some conviction there. Mm-hmm. But you don't have any conviction, and then you want me to compromise and say it's okay to blend the two. I don't think so. Yeah, and it just it just goes based off of even when we get into Bible prophecy, it goes based off of say that one world system and yep. that one world government and the one world religion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, the the ministry or what you were just saying about the witches, it, I think is a movement. Don't don't quote me. It's called the Nun Movement. It's mm-hmm. actually a group of individuals who think that they could believe or they could blend in witchcraft with Christianity, and they they call themselves nuns. Yeah. Not nuns like the Roman Catholics, just nuns, if you mm-hmm. will. And um, and when I was reading on that, I, I don't have too much because, like you said, I got to go back and study some more of it. But um, it, it's pretty sick. It, oh, it, it is. really is. It's pretty sick. So even that, like, if you were, the, since you're the, the saved Billy now, right? If you were into, to encounter the Billy back then, mm-hmm. right? How would you minister to that person? Like, what would you say to evangelize to the, old, the, the older Billy? Well, uh, first of all, and not just with that scenario with the old Billy, but frankly, anybody I come across, go back to the mask, right? Because everybody's, everybody's building a facade, a story, your identity. You know, people build that up over the years. And, but deep down inside, at night, when you're by yourself, laying on your bed, you're scared. There's something missing in life. There's a hole there. Something just ain't right. Now, we try to shut that voice up, that sensation up through all kinds of behavior, consumerism, idolatry, drugs, relationship, pleasure, feeding the flesh, you know, whatever. Mental stimulation, you know what? But it's there. And so I know it's there because it's there for every non-Christian. And so back to the, the, the old me or another person, I just go in with that knowledge and just cut to the chase. How's it going for you? Oh, I'm fine. No. How's it really going for you? Are you tired of it yet? What are you talking about? No, I mean, are you really tired of it yet? You tired of playing the game? Are you tired of wondering what life's all about? What's going to happen when you die? Really? You know, the question that you're running from. How's that hole in your heart? Really? Is it working out for you? Right? And, and, And then, let me tell you, I've been there. But let me tell you how it can be fixed. And how you could have true lasting joy and peace is through Jesus Christ, right? And then just share the gospel. But I go in banking that they're putting up that mask. And then a lot of people, uh, Hector, though, like, you know, they'll either try to keep it together, but you can see in their eyes, you're really just hitting the core issue. Uh, or some of them are just taken aback. They're like, how did you know? Like you're some sort mm-hmm. of a prophet. It's like, look, well, I used to be one of those people. And the scripture is very clear. Um, uh, those who do not know Christ do not have the spirit of Christ. Mm. You don't know. I, and I get it. I used to be one. And you would say they were, they were blind. Exactly. You're listening to the official Sober Minds podcast. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at who underscore you underscore follow. And you can download our app called Who You Follow, available in the App Store and Google Play. Now back to the show with Pastor Hector. You know him as Hector Q. You know, um, one of the I hear you reference, uh, you know, life after death all the time. And um, one of the books, it was your book. Um, you actually wrote in it for me. Uh, one of the books actually helped me. That life after death book really helped me in the sense of I had to minister. I had to preach. First funeral I ever did in my life two months ago was actually my brother-in-law's okay. yeah. funeral. And I read that entire book in two days. I just read it because I just felt like um, I kept I couldn't take out my head the fact that he died. And he saw Jesus face to face and he had to give an account for his whole life. Yeah. So so that whole book, it actually ministered to me and it gave me the boldness, if you will, yeah. to go up there and to preach as if there was their last time ever hearing Jesus ever. And um, the response was a good response because, you know, of course, it was God's word. But that book in itself, I, I would say everyone that we encounter from a day to day, even the old Billy, even the Billy's right now abroad, right? I would say every common question or the common question that everyone has is what's going to happen when I die? A lot of people think that they're going to turn into a butterfly or whatever it is that they feel or just going to be a bunch of nothingness. Right. Um, How what would you say to that person that believes that when they die, there is nothing else to expect? Well, the thing is, are you really prepared to run that risk? When the Bible is very clear, there is life after death. And. And let's say, let's say that I'm wrong. 
Okay. No big deal. But let's say that I'm right. Are you really willing to risk all eternity on ending up somewhere that God loved you so much he didn't want you to go to that he gave his one and only son to rescue from? A place called hell that is really there. And you really want to risk that? Especially when you had a way out free of charge as a gift. All you had to do was believe it and receive it. You really would want to do that? Why would you do that? That doesn't make sense to me. And just, you know, appeal uh, in that fashion. Um, and, uh, cause, and then again, you know, one of the biggest things that people derive truth, uh, they need to understand that the Bible really did come from God. And uh, because people basically derive truth from themselves today or the media or the secular educational system or the social media, you know, their own opinions, blah, blah, blah. And um, people need to understand that the source of truth, certainly on eternal matters, uh, only comes from the Bible. And that goes back to another apologetic issue. Of, okay, well, how do you know that the Bible did come from God? And you can get equipped on that and share that with them as well. Mm -hmm. There's something special about that book, unlike any other book in the history of humanity. You may want to get in there because it really did come from God. And it tells you the good news that you can have your sins forgiven. You can know for sure today and be at peace where you're going to go, not if, but when you die. Okay? And you don't have to worry about it anymore. Amen. Amen. Very well said. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break and we're going to get back to it uh, with Billy Crone, of course. So stay tuned and uh, just sit tight. We'll come back with Billy Crone. Thanks for listening. Find us on Instagram at who underscore you underscore follow. And you can download our app called Who You Follow that is available in the App Store and Google Play all for free. Don't forget Amen. to turn on your Amen. notifications well so you said. can always stay posted. Check back weekly on our podcast for new episodes. Until next time, the people must know.